looked up at the sky, could you actually see the stars and the solar corona in spite of the glare? We were never able to see stars from the lunar surface or on the daylight side of the moon by eye without looking through the optics. Uh, I don't recall during the period of time that we were photographing the solar corona what, uh, what stars we could see. I don't remember seeing any. Welcome, everyone. This is your host, Immune to BS. The title of this video is Light in the Impossible Universe. Now, you may have seen this before, this representation of what our sun looks like. But I offer to you that this is an absolute impossibility. To have a spinning ball 93 million BSMs away. I also offer that this representation of our solar system is complete BS. We are to believe that there's a ball of burning gas in the center of a vacuum, radiating heat and light in every direction for billions and billions of miles. It's just an impossibility. NASA claims that this is a photo taken in space of one of the moons of Saturn. This is an impossibility as well. It's a farce. It's impossible. It cannot be. As we have been told since we were children, the visible spectrum of electromagnetic waves that is visible to the naked eye is a very small sliver of the overall wavelengths. Now visible light cannot travel for millions and millions of miles, especially without some sort of medium. So they tell us that we are to believe that light travels millions and millions of miles. I call them BSMs or bullshit miles through the vacuum of space. Now, you may be wondering how a laser pulse can travel nearly 4,000 miles across the ocean. It doesn't without some help because the light will escape from the sides of the fibers. Look back at our propylene stream. Here's how the light attenuates as it travels. You can see here a narrow beam in the bucket that broadens a bit when it enters the stream. And then after the first bounce, the beam leaves even broader than it entered. That's because the interface with the air is uneven and the rays that make up the beam strike at slightly different angles. When that beam makes its second reflection, those individual rays diverge even more until by the time it reaches the third bounce, many of the rays are no longer at the critical angle and can exit from the sides of the stream. Here it happens in a few inches, but in a cable like TAT8, the signal travels a stunning 50 kilometers before it needs to be amplified. Absolutely amazing. I'm Bill Hammack, the engineer guy. So, in a fiber optic cable, after 50 kilometers, the signal must be boosted to keep it going. So why do they have to have a fiber optic cable to transmit the light? Why not just create a gigantic vacuum tube from the Americas to Europe and send light through it? Since it can travel millions and millions and millions of miles, you wouldn't think that 4,000 miles would be anything. Because it can't. Visible light cannot travel very far. And that's why the sun is not 93 million bullshit miles away, but more like 3,000 miles that is, it has been calculated. Because that's how far the light will travel. Got all my special skills, even my top 10 favorite movies. What's your number one? Star Wars? Nah, I don't go for that. Pew, 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 pew. Kind of stuff. No wonder we're not supposed to talk to them. They're out of their minds. When I walk out of a job interview, they're flabbergasted. They can't believe the things I say. Ken, really? Oh, there's the sun. Yeah. Maybe that's a way out. Oh, I don't remember the sun having a big 75 on it. Now, let's just look at sunspots. Do you believe that you can see sunspots on a ball 
that is 93 million bullshit miles away? No, of course not. The light would be so, so strong. It would just wash out everything. You wouldn't be able to see the sunspots unless you got close. Just like the number 75 on that bulb. Until you got close, then you could see it. Before then, it's washed out. So it is impossible to be able to see sunspots on a sun that is a ball 93 million miles away. Because light does not travel in space. Light is only visible when it hits the atmosphere of the Earth. Outside of the atmosphere, there are no lights. There is no color. Only darkness. Light is only visible when it hits the atmosphere of the Earth. So this image that you have right here, and any image like it, is completely false. Imaginary, pure fantasy. It does not exist. You get outside the atmosphere and you cannot see the stars because the source of light is not seen. We cannot see the source of light. I want you to, for a moment, close your eyes and imagine this. You walk into a room through a door and you close the door behind you. There are four walls surrounding you. Three of the walls have canvases on them. One is all green, one is blue, one is red. The other wall has no canvas, it's just white, and the rest of the room is white. In the center is a light bulb. You reach the string on the light bulb, you pull it down and the light goes out. It's pure darkness. You pull the string back down, the light comes back on. What colors do you see? You see the white of the background of the walls. You see the red canvas, you see the blue canvas, and you see the green canvas. Let me ask you, what color is the light? You cannot see the source of light. You can only see the refracted light, the light that is reflected and separated, and that is what we see. It controls all the frequencies. So if you don't know what the sun's doing, you don't know what frequencies to use. That's why RCA started radio astrology. You have to know what the sun's doing, and the planets tell you what the sun's doing. So RCA gave me the equipment, Sonoma State provided me with the place to do it, and the cosmos provided me with the total planetary alignment. So I was the guy with the equipment and everything right there as the thing happened. I studied the whole event over the couple of years that the whole solar cycle built into this alignment. There's no inside structure. Is it hollow? Yeah, there's only a surface. There's nothing inside. Is the sun actually, do we have combusting in our It's not burning anything. There's no fusion in the sun. That's well understood. Proven. Yeah, well, there's just not the way to prove that there is any. It's only in the flares do you get fusion. That's why all the x-rays, the flares, the arcs, and the x-rays, and the microwaves, and whatever result of fusion in the arcs. It's, there's no fusion in the sun. They don't know how the sun works. Why do you? What's special? How does the sun make light? It's a transformer. It transforms from some other dimension. It's not burning anything. It doesn't have to. It's a converter. Of what? I don't know. Nobody knows. But that's what it does. That's the only thing it can do because that's how everything works. Transforming from another dimension. Yeah, you could say it's taking energy from another dimension, counter space. There, there's no energy, actually. You can't, most of it you can't even measure in outer space or see. Can't see. No, you can't see the sun in yeah. free space. So the sun is not visible in outer space. Not in free space. It's only invisible when gross matter becomes involved, like the Earth's atmosphere and envelope and the surface of the moon or whatever. That makes the light.
Otherwise, there is no light. You can see the moon, you can see the earth, but you can't see the sun or you can't see the stars. But you can see the planets and yeah. the satellites. Right, you can see material objects, but you cannot see the sources of light. There is no light until there's a material object. To reflect off. So that means there's no time delay. So the whole time delay thing is, is meaningless. It doesn't take light years. There are no light years, because there's no light. So that, does, that means that the light you see from the distant stars isn't four million years old. It could be only minutes old. It could be instantaneous. All the theories collapse when you can't see the stars in outer space.